No one's expecting much from the ECB this Thursday. Perhaps it's about time Draghi stands and delivers. What my concern is that we're going to find the same old mantra trotted out that in the medium term all will be well. Well, we've seen the forecast before they made the rate reduction in June, i.e. 1.1% or so inflation next year, and then moving up to around 1.4% in 2016. This is still woefully below the 2% target level that the ECB are charged with. Now, they know and have seen all the academic studies from the Bank of International Settlements and other central banks. And they know the fact is that if you change rates on the official basis, sure, asset prices, FX and so on moves very quickly. But in terms of affecting domestic demand, overall aggregate demand, that probably takes a year to come through. And the inflation rate isn't affected for another two years. So why have they waited so long when they could see the trend that CPI in the Eurozone was on before they made that action? We've also got the ECB's Asset Quality Review, the Eurozone's bank stress tests coming in October. Let's see if there are any cowboys out there. Are there more gremlins in the works like we've seen in Portugal? Is there sufficient money around to actually bail out any banks or do we face the dreaded bail-in scenario once again? And overall, I still feel that the ECB has shown that they are almost asleep at the switch. It's as though ever since the success of OMT, which is still an untried policy, it seems to have flushed the ECB with this air of confidence. They only have to say the statement and the markets will fall into line. Well, eventually the markets will see through this trick. And the situation is, it's not a surprise that there is a flaw in the Eurozone monetary system. What would be the surprise if somebody had the courage to admit that there's a flaw? And the most wanted? A solvent France. My worry is that France is still the, uh, the sleeping nightmare that's not really being caught out by the markets yet. As France trades as though it's the second best, it actually is the least worst. And you look at the growth numbers, you look at the retail sales, it's all very tepid. It's still a very lowly ranked country in terms of a place to go and do business or to start up a new business. And I think the worry is that the current administration are on the wrong track. The promises that they would become more business friendly are half-baked and not being washed through the political system properly.